Good morning. I see some uh, new faces. Uh, welcome to our uh, church. We also welcome uh, Pastor Dennis and Ate Evelyn coming back from their apostolic ministry from the U.S. Tagal nung bisita sa Apo. So they both look 10 years younger. Uh, the youngness of the Apos rub off. So, so we, we welcome you. Thank you for being here. And uh, we hope you'll be blessed. Uh, hopefully the Lord will use your visit today to uh, bring you some truth, uh, open your eyes to some things. We are tackling the book of Jude. Uh, as most of you know, we got through the book of Matthew, the whole book of Matthew for a few years. And like I said before, uh, Matthew presented Jesus Christ, the King, to Jews. Basically, all the details about who he is, why he came. And now Jude tells us to protect that truth. So, sometimes when we, or oftentimes in the church, we feel the words content, fight for, are inappropriate in the church. But as we've said before, the enemy, Satan, the enemy of your soul, although we're Christians, he cannot have us anymore, but he will harass us and he will try to take the power of truth in our lives. And he does this by, as C.H. Spurgeon said, focusing his attention throughout eons, throughout history. The enemy focuses his initiative on propagating error. Hindi niya sasabihin sa'yo, maging pagano ka, be an atheist, be a paganist. No, he's gonna tell you, be religious, but the wrong religion. So he attacks truth. Kaya nga yung huli nating kanta, maganda. So we can say, thus saith the Lord. We worship God and we worship His truth. And we must always have a sense of desperation in accessing this truth for guidance. And this is what Jude is all about. It is both the offensive and defensive uh, book in Scripture, the only one dedicated in defending Scripture from apostates. So open your Bibles to the book of Jude. We will tackle verses 8 to 10 today. Jude 8 to 10. Likewise also these dreamers defile the flesh, reject authority, and speak evil of dignitaries. Yet Michael, the archangel, in contending with the devil, when he disputed about the body of Moses, dared not bring against him a reviling accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke you. But these speak evil of whatever they do not know, and whatever they know naturally, like brute beasts. In these things, they corrupt themselves. Join me in a word of prayer. Lord, here we are again. Another week has passed. If there's a survey, if you would ask each one of us, how we were. If we are going to be honest, if we are growing Christians, siguro tatahimik kami will say, not too well. But Lord, we come here with full confidence that our salvation, just like our sanctification, our Christian growth is guided and guaranteed by you. So we come here worshiping you, not because we're good, not because we're perfect, not at all. We come to you because we desire to obey you. We come to you because we are failures. But thank God, because when we act like failures, when we feel inadequate, that's when we feel that sense of desperation to know your mind, to know your truth, and to obey you. In fact, if there are people here who came without that sense of desperation, I feel that you make them needy now, that you make them hunger for righteousness. Because without this, Lord, we will not pay attention to your words. We will only listen but not do. So we pray, Lord, that you open our hearts that you take over the mind of the speaker now, who is so inadequate, to speak forth this eternal truth. I pray, Lord, that uh, you will make the message clear, and that only you will be highlighted. These things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. The title of our message is Description of False Teachers. Jude continues to uh, write this to protect the church. Last week, uh, Pastor George talked about... Um, the resulting activities of the false teachers. I want to go back, before we go to verses 8 to 10, I want to go back to Jude 7 from last week. It reads, Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them, having in like manner, with these given themselves over to fornication and gone after strange flesh, 
and set forth as an example, suffering the punishment of eternal fire. And Pastor George made it so clear that yung strange flesh is talking about homosexuality. Sodom and Gomorrah is so aberrant already. They went the, the full cycle of sin. As you know, sin escalates. You know, yung unang tingin, nagiging hipo, nagiging adultery, sunod-sunod. It escalates. It is not static. So, nag-grow siya to full-blown um, sin, which is ohinius, which is homosexuality. Pero hindi yun yung main issue sa Sodom and Gomorrah. Okay? It is just a manifestation of a root sin, which is the point of Jude. The root sin is apostasy. Sodom and Gomorrah, basically, is still in their minds, fresh in their minds, the flood, the act of judgment by God in which He, he wiped out the whole earth. The destruction was because of the sin of these people, which is apostasy. You see, after, uh, well, Noah no, lived 950 years. And then the flood. And after the flood, he lived another 350 years. Sodom and Gomorrah occurred 100 years after the death of uh, Noah. So yung anak niya, si Shem, was actually still in that generation. Uh, people in that time lived almost a thousand years. So in other words, these people knew about the flood, knew about the destruction, knew about the judgment of God, and yet they disregarded that truth, disregarded that very severe message of judgment, and forgot what they learned. And they escalated only a hundred years later into full-blown uh, sinfulness. So yung sin nila is forgetting that truth na winipe out ng, ng Lord yung earth. And so they apostatized. So makikita mo siguro, if we lived in that era, the warning would still be strong. The people would have known about the message of righteousness and judgment from God, which Noah preached, in which they rejected. And like I said, Shem, one of his sons, was still living at that time. Inabot nila yung message na yon. And this is the point of Jude. The ultimate danger of false teaching or veering away from God's precise truth and message, in their case, the message of judgment. The ultimate danger is not really the resulting sinfulness coming out of uh, turning away from truth, but it is the subtlety of the erroneous message, the subtlety of turning people away from the truth. Like I said, it's not atheism or paganism. Yung nag-iiba na yung katotohanan, hindi mo pa napapansin. That's why a lot of false teachers mix a lot of truth and then just a sprinkling of error. If you listen to a lot of the false teachers on TV, makikita mo maganda yung sinasabi nila. They say things that are really true. But when you really pay attention, you know, when they talk about, let's say, who Christ is, uh, Christology, uh, the essence of God, the nature of God, makikita mo unti-unting nag-iiba. In fact, there's a lot of people, especially older people, na sinasabi, ang galing magsalita ni ganyan. So he starts listening to this person. And so the credibility starts latching itself in the heart of that so-called Christian. Pero maya maya, he is into full-blown error. At ang binabanata nila na error are not the uh, lifestyle error, the, the minor error. It's the major doctrines. And before you know it, you catch on. So a lot of people are saying, or some pastors told me, take it easy, EJ, why are you so intense on, on proper interpretation? Because once you accept different interpretation, you start what they call the slippery slope. Magkakaroon na ng slide na hindi mo na na-check. Homosexuality in Sodom and Gomorrah, as Jude 7 is strongly uh, implying, is just a manifestation of the apostasy, the turning away from truth that the people once embraced as a result of a message, as a result of judgment, as a result of strong preaching, as a result of wisdom from God. And that is a danger of the church today. Kaya ang dami na nag-spin off na error. Universalism that all religions, no matter as long as you're looking for a higher being, submitting to good, a higher God, then okay na yan, universalism. Annihilationism, meaning God is good, but hell is not true even though it's in Scripture. To make the gospel attractive, they remove hell. So yung tinatawag na annihilationist, meaning 
If you obey God, you go to heaven. If you don't obey God, you don't go to hell. You simply get annihilated. You disappear. These are parang, ano lang, ano mga kaliwat kanan na parang kakonte. But once you start not verifying what Scripture says on anything, you start the slippery slope. And this is what the false teachers are doing. They come in undetected. I use the analogy of the Trojan horse, like a gift, but once they're in, they're in. We must protect the gospel because of its, its purity is the only solution to man's woes. And so we continue. I have five points um, basically describing the false teachers of Jude's day and today also. Number one, they sell signs and wonders. Jude 8 says, Likewise, so kinoconnect ni Jude yung mga nangyari sa Sodom and Gomorrah at saka yung false teachers. Likewise, also these dreamers. Dreamers? Ano ba yung dreamers? Interesting. Ito mga false teachers na to are dreamers. So that's why you have to go back to the original language. The apostates typically exhibit ungodly character traits and they have these practices na distinctive sa kanila. These dreamers sa Tagalog, according to my Tagalog Bible, yung mga may pangitain. What is that? Dream. Ano ba sa Greek to get a better, precise explanation? The word dream, panaginip, the plain panaginip in Greek is onar. Ang ganda ng onar ko kagabi. Panaginip yan. Panaginip lang yan. Pero yung dream, na English din, pero has a different Greek word, is enupniadzo. Ito yung visions. Telling of future. So iba yung dream, na plain dream, dito sa Greek dito, which is basically visions, Nag, nagpa-prophesize sila. They have a special ability to tell things that are mystical. So these are phony visionaries. This is a distinctive of a false teacher then and I think even more now. If, so if a person tells me, may, may, nag, nakipag-usap sa akin sa Lord, God told me something exclusive only to me in a vision. Normally, I run away. That's why scripture is now present. Anything I say as a pastor, anything you say as a Christian, you say, thus says the Lord, Show me in scripture. But not these guys. They have exclusive revelations. Enup niadzo. These false teachers often claim dreams that as the authoritative divine source of their new truth. Once they say new truth, they cannot show to you in scripture. Sabi nila, they, they need to have a higher authority than themselves. And the, the highest authority that we have now is scripture. Kung hindi nila mapakita sa Bible, sabi nila, ah, I got this from a vision. This allow apostates to substitute their own counterfeit authority for God's truth. Again, I want you to remember what the word apostate means. Ha? Yung apostate, tinanggap yung katotohanan. Maybe even superficially accepted the truth of God. But they turned away. Now, some apostates, they come into the church, they accept, they get into sin, they leave. But these apostates, they stay and they propagate the lie for whatever reason normally for personal, selfish reasons. So these dreams allow uh, apostates to substitute their own counterfeit authority for God's truth. And why do people believe them? Why don't people say, nasan sa Bible yan? Because what they present, these visions are more exciting. So meron tong customers. And I'm preaching this to you so that you don't become customers. So don't, you do not look for the bells and whistles beyond Scripture. Scripture is normally for unbelievers, bland and boring. Scripture only becomes exciting to you when the Holy Spirit is at work in your heart. Kasi na-feed yung desire mo for holiness. That is what Matthew talks about, being hungry for righteousness. Lord, holy discontent. Remember that term? Lord, gusto kong makasunod sa'yo, but it's so hard. And then the Word of God, which is like a double-edged sword, when it's, it feeds you, that is the most exciting thing in the world. But, if you're into religion for other reasons, you will look for what I call bells and whistles. And this is what these apostates, false teachers, provide. And you see this all over the place. Maybe you even question, but you don't dare question because you want to be loving. But they are turning you away from truth. In fact, if you would ask a lot of theologians, they will say the worst sin in the world is the sin of attacking error. 
influencing others for sin, even homosexuality, will destroy their bodies. But if you attack error in the minds of men, there is no more hope. That's why apostates are so dangerous. And they are dreamers. They use these visions, evil imaginations. This is from God, angels. This one uh, cult had their founder, Joseph Smith, visited by the angel Moroni. And he was given the Book of the Mormons. And if you look at their church in Quezon City, you will see the angel Moroni sitting on top of that church. Special revelation only to him being given as a higher authority. Secret and exclusive revelations. Truth invented, but it's truth which is bait and switch. Once you get trapped into that, you hear more of their lies. You see, in the past, God did use visions and dreams. Daniel, the prophets. But since we have the scripture, it is the ultimate standard, standardizer of truth, the word of God. The word of God must be used to test all truth. In the Old Testament, in fact, the term dreamer, enupniazo, was virtually always synonymous with the false prophet. As in Moses' warning in Deuteronomy 13, if there, and I think this applies to us today, so listen well. If there arises among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams, and he gives you a sign or a wonder, this should be in the New Testament. And the sign or the wonder of which he spoke to you comes to pass. Nangyari yung hinulaan niya. Saying, let us go after other gods which you have not known and let us serve them. What I said happened, I must be true. Now let's deviate from scripture. That's the pattern. You know, it happened. But, he said, let us go after gods, other gods which you have not known and let us serve them. You should not listen to the words of that prophet or the dreamer of dreams. Listen to this. Kasi, you know, we, 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 we are gonna hit on false teachers. But beware, huh? We are also, the listeners are responsible. As I told you before, I realized only recently that I hate false teachers, you know, as a pastor. They corrupt the flock. But at the same time, I learned also recently not, uh, not all listeners are victims. They actually want what that pastor, false teacher want to say. They don't want the plain word of God. You shall not listen to the words of that prophet or the dreams of that the dream, dreamer of dreams, for the Lord your God is testing you to know whether you love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul. You shall walk after the Lord your God and fear Him and keep His commandments and obey His voice. And you shall serve Him and hold fast to Him. Folks, only through Scripture. But that prophet or that dreamer of dreams shall be put to death because he has spoken in order to turn you away from the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt and redeemed you from the house of bondage to entice you from the way in which the Lord your God commanded you to walk. So the ultimate measure is still the word of God. Not vision, not bells and whistles, not smoke, not lights. It is the word of God. So in this passage, having identified the apostates of false dreamers, Jude went on to outline characteristics of the nature of these false teachers. And Write this down because I believe this is still operant today. One, they are immoral. Two, they are lawless. And three, they are presumptuous. They are immoral. Continuing Jude 8, Likewise, also these dreamers defile the flesh. Isa na namang distinctive sa kanila yan. Reject authority and speak evil. Yung munang defile. Ano ba yung defile? Miyaino. Parang ini-stain, dinudungisan. That is the origin of that word. Yun namang flesh, starts yung katawan, the flesh. You know? Uh, uh, this talks about the, uh, the, sin of, uh, the, the sin of the false teacher, which is so common, which is sexual sin. Mapapansin mo, a lot of false teachers, they have secret lives. Why is that? Why is that? I found out only from studying this. Kasi apostate teachers who are inevitably immoral, whether it's public or not, 
have no ability to restrain the lust. And that goes for Christians as well. If you are a so-called Christian but not a true believer, you have no ability to restrain the lust in your flesh because they are devoid of the Spirit. So yung ability nila to reject sexual sin is not there. In fact, later on, we will study in Jude 18 and 19, just as a preview. In the last time, there shall be mockers walking after their own ungodly lust. They are who make separations. Sensual. Why? Having not the spirit. No ability to resist. So eventually, time and truth, given time, truth comes out. They have no divine power to control their own sinful impulses. And again, this applies not only to false teachers, but to apostate and pretending Christians. Once we receive Jesus Christ in our lives, the Holy Spirit comes in. And that not only gives us the propensity to reject sin, but the ability. Propensity. Hindi ka na pwedeng magkasala ng tuloy-tuloy. Your new nature will not allow it. That is the test. Pag tuloy-tuloy yung kasalanan mo, walang trigger, the Holy Spirit is probably not there. And then, once you know, ah, well, I hate my sin, but then the twin truth that the Holy Spirit will now give you the strength and the wisdom and the direction to refuse. False teachers do not have that. So them and their followers, so you will see churches, and I will not name names. I'm serious, I will not. <laughs> Ang showy, ano? And I hope, again, this is for us. This is not just pointing fingers. This is for us to avoid this as well. Ang galing ng external worship. But look at the lives. Punong-puno ng compromise and adultery and sinfulness. Why? No ability to restrain themselves. And again, di ba sinabi ko, kaya gusto nila ng bells and whistles because the plain word of God is not what they need. But the plain word of God is what gives you the ability to resist and it is what you hunger for. So, this so-called religion, and I'm, I'm even talking not about the coast, I'm talking about even some of the evangelical churches, promote a system that accommodates sin and religion, the dichotomous life of a liberal. So, pag merong religion na nagpipreach, and yet, uh, hindi matisist yung last in the lives of its members, then you know that they're probably not teaching the plain word. Number two, Second one, or point number three, they are lawless. Likewise, also these dreamers defile the flesh and reject authority. What do you mean reject authority? Hinahamak nila ang kapangyarihan ng Diyos. Since apostate teachers love their immorality, it follows that they reject authority. If you are going to pursue an immoral lifestyle and be religious at the same time, you have to invent a religious system to accommodate that. Otherwise, your conscience will not let you have peace. Are you following me? So okay lang. Well, that is okay. Forget repentance. Forget sanctification. Let's talk about the goodness of God only. Do not be the Holy Spirit to other people. They reject authority. The word rendered authority, kuriotes, kurios, Lord. Because they demand to ruin their own lives. Because they don't subscribe to sanctification, holiness, Christ-likeness. Apostates refuse to submit to Christ's lordship, so they invent their own lord. They will fabricate their own god. Just like the Romans of old, they fabricate their own god, like the god Bacchus, the god of wine. Before you worship the god Bacchus, you have to get drunk first. Wow! What a religion! Ano? Yung isa naman, yung kaya meron mga temple prostitutes, you have to copulate with the temple prostitutes priestess before you can properly worship. Talk about mixing. The Romans invent their own gods. If you go to Rome today, you will see the old temples of Bacchus made grapes. Kailangan inumin mo muna, malasing ka, and then properly makaka-worship ka. That's part of the requirement. So these people are lawless because they create their own law. They reject the authority of God, meaning again, going back, they reject Scripture, which is our ultimate authority. Iibahin. And boy, there's a lot of clients. There's a lot of clients. This is the truth. Now, rejecting authority also refers to destroying something established. 
such as an existing authority, as in, again, the authority of Scripture. How? Not by going against it frontally, but by staining it, deviating from it, changing it a little bit here and there. That is why you, small church, must know and discern what the person on this pulpit is, is uh, saying long after Pastor George is dead. He's not here, so I can say. Authority of Scripture is the ultimate check. First Timothy 4 gives us this warning. Now the Spirit expre expressly says that in latter times, some will depart from the faith, giving heed to this deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry, commanding to abstain from foods, which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. Why? Because, again, it is attractive to invent these kinds of religions. If you follow scripture, the standards are very high. People walk away, just like the rich young ruler. So they, not, they don't focus on sanctification, but on fascination. They'll fascinate you and accommodate you. Bells and whistles. But it is not the truth. And people who will correct this will be labeled judgmental, not judgmental. Merciful. If a pastor would not warn, that is error. So close to truth, but that is error. There's a drop of cyanide in that gallon of so-called water. It will kill you. How do you do that? Simply lang po. Make sure that you meditate on God's word day and night and focus on interpretation. Authorial intent. Remember that, uh, ayan, nandiyan na si Pastor Dennis. Perspicuity. Tiningnan nyo lang ba sa dictionary yung word na yun? God is so brilliant, He can put theological terms, eternal terms, into understandable words. The perspicuity of Scripture. Madali siya intindihin. So, intindihin nyo yung isinisermon. And our only check, our GPS, our standard verse-by-verse verse check is that each verse must be interpreted not just by the pastor, but by the entire congregation. Ikaw na Kristiyano, dapat alam mo gawin yan. It is easy to understand. It is plain. Especially, in fact, not specially, absolutely by those who have the Holy Spirit. In fact, yung matatalino, hindi nila maintindihan. But that is so critical in avoiding, for avoiding error. Number four, five points lang to. They are presumptuous. Presumptuous. Likewise, also these dreamers defile the flesh, reject authority, and speak evil of dignitaries. Yun. Ano yun? Speak evil of dignitaries. We have to uh, go to, again, the, the Greek. You know? Speak evil. The Greek word is interesting. The etymology is, is very nice. Blasphemeo. That is speak evil of all. Blasphemeo, where we get the English term blasphemy. They slander. They speak evil of what? Sino in dignitaries? Well, the ESV, one of, uh, one of the best uh, Bible translations, uh, uses the word not dignitaries, but glorious ones. The NAS is even clearer. Dignitaries is angelic majesty. They blaspheme angelic majesties. Ito yung another distinctive ng false teachers noon at saka ng false teachers ngayon. Binablasfameo nila ang mga anghel. Bakit? Two ways. Angels, throughout redemptive history, number one, are devoted to God's holy glory. They are given the special role of establishing God's moral order throughout redemptive history. They are God's policemen in implementing. Okay? Uh, people who go to Clark obey the traffic rules. Why? Ang gagaling ng pulis doon. These are basically angels. Yung rule ni God, you go against it, you go against angel because they are the DEA of God. What's DEA? Not Drug Enforcement Agency. Divine Enforcement Agency. DEA. So if you go against God's law, God's rule, modify God's law, you go against, and you are, in this verse, talking about blaspheming angels whose primary responsibility given by God is to protect His moral order. Are you following me? So pag 
lumabag ka sa salita ng Diyos, if you change the word of God or disobey the word of God, you are actually going against angels and God. But there is a second meaning. The false teachers were not just irreverent as far as holy angels are concerned. This term also, as implied by a parallel text in 2 Peter, and I'll read that to you in a while, are also uh, uh, being chastised in this text, not just for reviling holy angels by being irreverent and unholy, but they, they are also blaspheming fallen angels, which you are not supposed to do. Today's false teachers, you notice, know rebuke, command, chastise demons. Pinag-aralan ko mabuti ito. You're not supposed to do that. You have no power to do that. Only God can do that. The false teachers were not just irreverent, they were blasphemers and specifically of angelic majesties, which includes fallen angels. In 2 Peter, a parallel verse talks about specifically these fallen angels. 2 Peter 2.10 reads, especially those who walk according to the flesh, the apostates, the false teachers, in the lust of uncleanness and despise authority. They are presumptuous, self-willed. They are not afraid to speak evil of dignitaries. I rebuke you! I saw the report. Nanonood kasi ako nung sa TV. Sabi ko, galing, nare-rebuke niya. And then I read this. I admit to you, first time I saw it, huh? That is presumptuous as far as God is concerned. Dignitaries refers to angels, wicked angels in, in 2 Peter 2.10. Who have a level of existence in the supernatural world that has a dignity and a transcendent quality about it that is beyond humanity. A certain honor belongs to those who transcend time, initially promoted by God, but still, transcend time and abilities and powers of men. Consequently, consequently, there must be no frivolity regarding Satan and his angels. You notice a lot of false teachers today? They use as an attraction their ability, secret and exclusive ability to cast out all these demons all around. Ikaw hindi, ako lang. They don't, listen to me because I can explain to you the word of God. No. no. Listen to me. Because God is speaking to me exclusively with new revelations na ako lang. And you cannot challenge His testimony. Paano mo i-challenge yun? Pag may sinabi ako dito, pwede nyo i-challenge. Pastor, ba rin interpretation mo? But when He says, God told me, give me all your money, how can you challenge that? That's, that's, that's exclusive to Him. And also, they attract you with their saying, I can also have the power to cast out demons. Yan yung mga attraction nila. They're bells and whistles. And this is what Jude is talking about. How appropriate for us to be talking about this now. This is so abundant in today's so-called church. And the bigger church of today, I think, is permeated with this. Let's go to the next verse in Jude. Yet Michael, the archangel, in contending with the devil, when he disputed about the body of Moses, dared not bring against him a reviling accusation to Satan. But said, sinabi na lang, simple, the Lord rebuke you. Contrasting their behavior, the false teacher's behavior, with that of Michael, the ark, pag sinabong ark, the chief angel, the most powerful angel, even Michael did not demonstrate irreverence when he disputed with the devil and argued about the body of Moses. Ano ba yun? What is that all about? Real quick. When Moses died, Satan, implied here, wanted to use his body to be venerated and idolized. You know, we went to the Vatican about a, year, a few years ago. And there's a pope there that is uh, what I call the petrified pope. A patay na pope a few hundred years ago. Pero hindi siya na-agnas. So sinanto siya, kinanonize, and people worship. See, people, I, I told you before, part of the error is uh, uh, Satan wants you not to be an atheist not to be a paganist, but a religious uh, errorist. So, when you see a false system of religion, makikita mo internal, wala. That's why they don't want the plain word of God. Because the plain word of God attacks the inside, convicting you, changing you. But the false religion, propagated by false teachers, maraming external uh, garb. Ano? So, maraming relics, magagara yung suot, 
uh, ang daming mga symbols. Because it distracts from true worship. And here, as today, pag hindi mo itinago yung katawan ni Moses, sasambahin. So, only God knew. Even Satan did not know. So, pinag so tinatago yung katawan ni Moses ng Lord and uh, the devil was fighting for it. And Michael was sent to accomplish God's will of hiding the body of Moses. Pero nung nag contention na si Satan at saka si, si Michael, Michael did not say, I rebuke you! In the name of Jesus. Sorry. I like imitating them. In fact, you can see that in Deuteronomy 34, Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab according to the word of the Lord. And he buried him, God did, in a valley in the land of Moab opposite Beth Peor. But no one knows his grave to this day. So that another false religion propagated by a false teacher will rise. But Satan said, Sayang to. Now, the point of the text is that out of respect for Satan's status and power as the highest created being, Michael dared not bring against him a reviling accusation. Hindi niya kinakas, hindi niya minumura, hindi niya sinisigawan. As if Michael possessed sovereign dominion over him because he does not we do not, but false teacher to appear distinctive, powerful, and exclusive will command devils and make it appear to people that he has such power. And it attracts people. The devil has a hold of your wallet. You give me half the content of your wallet, we will cast out the demon. What a deal. False teachers exercise no such restraint, but pretend to have personal power over Satan and angelic beings. The parallel verse, once again, 2 Peter 2. Those who walk according to the flesh in the lust of uncleanness and despise authority, we read this before, they are presumptuous, self-willed, not afraid to speak of dignitaries. Verse 11, whereas angels who are greater in power and might do not bring a reviling accusation against them before the Lord. Why? Again, why? Are you still listening to me? This is for you. Marami pong lalapit sa inyo. Marami kayo makikita. They ca False teachers come through your doors, through your TV sets, through your radio, through CDs, through literature. Watch out. All they're presenting to you, pag hindi mo nahanap sa scripture, do nothing but distract from the plain and prescribed truth of the word of God. Always look for the calibration mechanism, which is the Word of God. If anybody claims anything, show me in the Word of God. I'm not just talking about casting out demons. People who advise you about your life. Hihiwalan ko ba asawa ko? Anong gagawin ko sa anak ko? The discipler must know the Word of God. That's why this church focuses in the last five years on LTD. Yan lang ang ginagawa. Train, train, train the leaders how to handle the perspicuous Perspicuous. <laughs> Tama ba yan? The easy to understand word of God. But these speak evil of whatever they do not know and whatever they know naturally like brute beasts. Ano yung ibig sabihin nun? Di ni, sila ay nagsasalita ng mga bagay na hindi nila naunawaan tulad ng mga hayop. To conclude this section, and this is our last verse, Jude compared this man to animals. Itong mga false teachers na to. And again, ano, don't, I'm talking about today also. Talking today. And of course, as I preach, please don't think I'm talking down to you or to other pastors. Okay? This is a warning to us. As I was telling Pastor Dennis, we, we need to watch ourselves also. That's why we really have to stick to Scripture. Kaya pala sinabi kay Josue, you will meditate on God's word day and night. And the most dangerous is if you're, you have the word and then you veer. That's the most dangerous. Mabuti pa yung ang layo mo, tapos pumunta ka. Pero pag ang lapit mo na, lumayo ka pa, that's the problem. So Jude compared apostates to unreasoning animals. So unawain natin yun by going to the Greek again. Speak of what, whatever they don't understand. The Greek has a precise one word for that term, whatever they do not know. Literally, it means without a word. More precisely, the Greek word for that is a logiai, a logos. It's alpha derivative. It negates 
the following word logic, yung ah. Logos. The ah, alpha derivative, negates logos. Walang logic. Like animals. Let me ask you something. I promise, Doc, I won't joke anymore too much, but I can't resist. Nakakita na ba kayo ng mga hayop? When you, have you talked to a cow? Sabi mo, ang hirap ng baka, no? Oo nga. Tinitingnan mo siya, parang nakikipag-usap sa'yo. Di ba? There are dogs who parang, this dog understands me. My boyfriend, my girlfriend don't, but my dog, and, kasi pag titingnan mo yung hayop, you know what? They don't, under, they, are, they are a logos. They have no logic. More precisely, animals have no self-awareness. Hindi sila aware that they exist. So, they, they operate on pure instinct. Human beings are not like that. In fact, means we are too self-conscious. We are aware. Animals, they utter words, Oh, nadapa ka! Be! Muti nga. Sorry. I can't resist the joke. But there's nobody there. This is the comparison. They're making sounds, they're saying something, but that they are alogiai, alogos. They are devoid of understanding. So pag nag-preach ako dito, nang wala sa konteksto, naiintindihan nyo ba? <laughs> okay, I'm gonna stop there. No matter how highly educated the apostate teachers are, and you know, this has been pulled on me so many times, meron akong PhD. Ako, BA lang. Ay, sorry. No matter how highly educated the apostate teachers are, how profoundly philosophical they think they teaching or how many mystical visions and insights and demonic powers they claim to have, they are still like brute animals. How do you know? Paano mo malalaman yan? Hindi, na, hindi ka naman nag-aral. We have the word of God. Kaya masanay tayo na each verse, alam mo yung ibig sabihin, it's not hard. You can do it. You can do it. In fact, God wrote it so that people can understand it. But these guys want to project the erroneous fact that they have exclusivity, but they are like brute beasts because they do not soundly interpret truth of God's revelation. Apostate teachers in their brash, bold, egotistical infatuation with imagined power and authority rail on, which, on that which they do not even understand. Again, 2 Peter 2, 12, like natural brute beasts, made to be caught and destroyed, speak evil of the things they do not understand and will utterly perish in their own corruption. Somebody told me yesterday, you know, this text is so simple. Even a child, my own apo, can understand. Na ito, lolo, papunta sa destruction. How did, how did your grandson, grandchild know that? That's the conclusion of my message. Naintindihan ng bata na pag ganto ka, you're talking about manipulating God's word, deviating people from God's simple truth. Like I said, Worst form of evil is the destruction of truth. Pag in-influence mo yung tao na maging lasenggo o maging adulterer, may pag-asa. But if you bring people deviation of truth, there is no hope for you and for them. It is the worst form. So they are being compared to beasts. They are intellectually arrogant, spiritually ignorant, because they are blinded by sin. Why? May nagtanong pa sa akin the other day, paano nangyayari yan? Because there are false teachers who started as good teachers. Well, selfish intent. You want to be a big-time pastor? I'm not saying that all big churches are like this. But a lot of big churches are a result of erroneous teaching, which attracts terror. Terror. See, people are given, everybody, human beings, we're given the wiring to look for higher being, for God. That is God's help for you, di ba? Psalm 19, general and special revelation. So, ginagamit mo yung desire na yun, pero hindi mo sila gagamitin to guide them towards God, but to guide them towards your own prophet as a false teacher. That is, has always been. Matthew pa lang, pera na eh, negosyo, self-interest, power, position. Why? Because they were not probably believers to begin with, and they will probably not be believers because... As you practice false teaching, you get hardened and hardened, cauterized so that truth does not affect you anymore, and you get blinded. 2 Corinthians 4, but even if our gospel is veiled, na ve veil na, no? Pero for those who are seeking truth, binubuksan yung mata. But 
It is veiled to those who are perishing, whose minds the God of this age has blinded, who do not believe lest the light of the gospel of the glory of God, who is the image of God, should shine on them. Now, let me warn you, if you listen to false teachers because you like the bells and the whistles, and veer away from preachers who, although not as good and not as exciting, in fact, hurtful, but accurate, you are desensitizing your heart. Mabuti pa, umalis ka na muna. Then you come back when you're ready to change. But don't forum shop for preachers. Kaya itong survey, yung ginagawang survey nung nauso sa Amerika, ask people what they want to hear. I want to I wanna hear how you would solve my message, my, my marriage, how you would uh, uh, solve my financial problem, but don't tell me about repentance. O sige, yan lang ipipreach natin. So these people are judicially blind already. There's a decision already from heaven to blind them. And they are gathering flock for themselves. And again, remember, this include the listeners. This include the listeners. Especially pag narinig mo na yung katotohanan, yung kalabit na parang mali. Especially now that you're hearing this message. You are responsible to do that. To discern. And this is what Jude is all about. To discern and to reject false teaching in the church. 1 Corinthians 2.14 the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God for the foolishness to him. So, pumunta tayo dun sa false teachers na preaching God, godliness, but this, but not the true word. You know? Kasi yung pure word is foolishness to him. Nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. Now, somebody asked me, listen to me, I'm almost done. Pastor, somebody once asked me, paano, posible ba na may totoong kristyano sa isang false system? Posible ba yun? Pwede bang kristyano ang gantong nag sa ganyang religion? Especially our old religion uh, before we became Christians uh, in this country? I did not know the answer until somebody told me to the question, can a true Christian be in a false system of religion? Answer? Yes! Hindi mo pwedeng sabihin, kung mo't nandiyan ka sa religion na yan, walang kristyano dyan. No, a person can be in that system and be a Christian, but not for long. Why? They will discern the error. Now, yung lumang system natin, uh, childhood religion natin, madaling alisan kasi malayo, but there are pulpits, evangelical pulpits, and believe me, ha, I'm not, wala akong tinutukoy, ha, please don't put words in my mouth. I am not. This is general. We're in June, so I'm preaching this. But there are pulpits. Sound Christian, look Christian, but not really teaching error, but not teaching truth. Are you following me? Pragmatism, business, What's the problem? What's the problem? Again, as I started uh, the message on Jude, the biggest harm, the biggest harm, listen to me, I'm almost done. That's the second time. On the third, I'm done na talaga. <laughs> listen to me, I'm almost done. Second time. The biggest harm in false teaching is not pa nga the false teaching that Jesus is not God, although that is very harmful, that you can mix children of God in the U.S. Sex, uh, orgy, and worship. U.S., the biggest harm is that it detracts you from listening to the truth. Once a week ka na lang sumimba. Ang narinig mo pa sounds right but not the right. Are you, are you following me? It deprives you. That's the harm. So instead of potent medicine, 500 milligram amoxicillin, they feed you sugar pill. Tastes good, smells good. Looks like makakapagpagaling. It does nothing for you until you are fatally sick. Last point. Jude 10. They are destroying themselves and their hearers, but these speak of evil, whatever they do not know. You know what that means. Whatever they know naturally, like brute beast, you know, what, you know what that means now. And the last phrase, in these things, they corrupt themselves. Again, we have to go back. Anong may ibig sabihin, they corrupt themselves? Nakukorrupt sila? No. In the ESV, again, a good translation they are destroyed. Eventually, you will be destroyed. How? For eternity. So you have to suri, you have to examine who you get your feeding from. And again, <laughs> but kailan ba yung tama? Not at all. That is why this is a scary, uh, preaching is scarier now than ever. They are destroyed, them and their hearers. Not only because they desensitize you now. Alam nyo ba yung medical term na 
uh, pag uminom ka ng gamot, hindi mo tinapos yung series, yung amoxicillin, you, you develop a, anong tawag doon? Resistance. So you hear truth, but now you want truth with too much sugar. Without repent. Alisin mo yan. Ayoko yan. Not, thus says the word of God. You know, you get desensitized and you reject the ultimate and the only cure for all your ailment, both physical and spiritual. The true, accurate, plain, precise, easy to understand word of God. And that is not exclusive to anyone. In fact, kahapon sa aming leadership training, the vision of the elders here now is each one of you can counsel somebody. Say, Anong problema mo? Uh, I have a problem with my children. Be able to access three to four verses and say, let's study this together and see what it says. You know what? God wrote the Bible so that you can do that. Only prerequisite, you must have a Bible and you must have the Holy Spirit. A degree, ang tawag nga namin dyan, minsan, ano eh, Cemetery, hindi seminary. Uh, I'm not. We, we we should go to seminaries, but means an. It doesn't help. But study of the word of God, adherence to it, and avoidance of false teachers. So they invite judgment every time they teach. That is why, in Second John ten. Pakisulat nyo ayon. Second John ten to eleven. Okay. Definition again. Definition. Ano yung apostate? Seems like teaching the truth, but teaching something else. They're veering away from the truth. Very stealthily. Okay? Anong tawag doon? Apostate. No? They are now teaching something else. Ang sabi sa John, 2 John 10 and 11, do not welcome them in your house. They are that potent. Okay? Pag nakahawa ka ng cyanide, kahit hindi mo malunok yan, it will penetrate your skin, it will kill you. That's how potent it is. Sa aming laboratorio, meron kaming department doon na parang astronaut yung mga tao. Even your breathing apparatus must be double filter. Ganyan ang potency ng false teaching. Do not welcome them and even greet them. In the end, they are destroyed by means of their own lying and deceiving heresies which bring upon them the judgment of God. False teachers and listeners. Again, there's a lot of churches that preach error. And I think there's also a lot of churches that preach truth. When you come into church, please bring your Bible. Okay? Tingnan mo yung sinasabi ng pastor. And then, try to learn how to interpret scripture. Just by reading it, getting some tools, a good commentary, pag mo. It's not hard. That is the legacy that the church must have. Why? I will quote to you as I finish. Talaga na. The most fearful passage in Scripture, the most fearful possible event in the life of a so-called Christian at the end of his life, ito yung pinaka-nakakatakot na mangyayari. Naakala mo, Kristiyano ka, but because you follow the false teacher, once you get to heaven, at nandun si San Pedro, hawak yung manok niya. That's not biblical. <laughs> Hindi ka pwede pumasok. What? That's a result of the teaching of the false teachers. But you're also responsible. Kasi na-detect mo na eh. So I'll read that to you, that passage to you. Matthew 7, 23 Many will say to me in that day, what day? Judgment day, a thousand years from now. Or tonight, if you die tonight, that is that day. Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? Cast out demons in your name. Remember that? done many wonders in your name. Bells and whistles. And then I'll declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Everybody bow down our heads. I want you to ponder and pray before I call the music team. How are you in terms of uh, your high view of the Word of God? And how are you in terms of your low view of yourself? Because the two are connected. If you have holy discontent, you will want the milk of the Word of God because there is a dissatisfaction being given to you by God. You cannot do it by yourself. And that is God's mercy and grace. When you want to be like Christ, yan po eh ibinibigay sa Kristiyano, the new desire, a desire you never had before. 
But you must have the Holy Spirit. So if you are not a Christian and simply religious, you're in a path of destruction. If you do not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, the plain truth is the wages of sin is death. That's the plain gospel. But Jesus Christ came down as a propitiation, as a substitute for you. So you cry out to him in desperation. Can you do that now? Second, I want you to ponder and pray that you will meditate on God's word so that if you do become a Christian, you will be protected from the expected attack of the enemy. Pag naging Christian ka, the enemy might not be able to get you anymore, but he will try to detract you from the true teaching of God. So you will be a weak Christian the rest of your life. Ask that God give you the hunger and desire to meditate on God's word day and night. And finally, once you have achieved this salvation, desire for the word of God, will you contend and defend the faith once for all delivered to us by studying and telling others, not being mayabang, don't do that also, huh? but by sharing with others the superiority of scripture, the inferiority of yourself, but saying, ito yung gamot, may sin cancel ako, ininom ko to, ininom mo din, and teach them scripture. Let's spend a couple of minutes, pray, ponder, cry out to God, and ask Him that we operationalize all these things that we heard this morning. Go ahead and pray by yourself.